just gone noon and welcome to the Midday Brief on the Joy News channel on Multi TV. My name is Jennifer Jane Asante. This afternoon in the headlines, it's World Autism Day. We will be bringing you in-depth analysis on the condition and the role we play in helping those with the condition. Also, President John Mahama files his tax returns and Ghana's Supreme Court hears the election petition before it. We'll bring you these and more after the break. Now the Supreme Court will resume sitting on Tuesday morning, that is today, to consider, resolve and adopt some issues raised by lawyers in the petition contesting the legitimacy of President John Mahama. Bearing any last-minute hitches, the court sitting is likely to mark the last hurdle to be cleared before the hearing of the substantive petition, which is calling for the annulment of 4,670,000 504 votes cast in the December 2012 polls. During the sitting, the court will arrive at issues for trial and subsequent determination based on the rules of the court, the law, consultation with the parties in the case where the need arises, evidence before it and also to its discretion. In doing that, the court is expected to decide whether or not to immediately reject some, approve all, or fix a date to rule on more than 30 issues by the parties to be set aside for determination. The court, however, might, in accordance with the law and at its own discretion, not delve into issues agreed on by all the parties in the case. It will concentrate on the stalemate matters, resolve those issues, and thus pave the way for the hearing of the substantive matter, which promises to be a landmark in the legal and historical Po sorry, legal and political history of Ghana. That we send to get the court to set out the issues arising out of the pleadings and also to give directions regarding the mode of trial is so pending. And uh, you may recall that the court asked that the counsel for the party should put their heads together with a view of coming to a common ground on mm. the issues to be set down for trial. Mm. Of course, that failed, and that is why the matter has to come up today. Our expectation is that once the court deals with the matters arising out of the respective uh, proposals by the parties, the court should be in a position to give directions and then to be able to set down a date for the start. But ahead of that also is pending an application, as you have referred to, of the Electoral Commission, not only in respect of the alleged further and better particulars that we have failed to provide, but they are also at this time seeking leave of the court to further amend their amended answer. So that is also in the way, and the court can only give the directions after it dealt with this matter. You just heard Gloria Kufu, lead counsel for the petitioners in the election case. She was speaking on the AM show this morning, explaining the details of today's sitting. Now, let's stay with matters concerning President John Mahama. This morning, President John Mahama has filed his tax returns for the year 2012. The president was at the head office of the Ghana Revenue Authority around ministries, which falls under the Kimbu district to file his returns. The president first filed the required forms under the supervision of officers before he proceeded to the cash office to hand over his check for an official receipt. Speaking to the media, President Mahama dispelled the notion that presidents do not pay taxes. I filed my tax returns for the 2012 year where I was vice president most of the time. But even as president, um, if you have any other income apart from your official income, you're supposed to pay tax on it. And so it's not true that presidents shouldn't pay tax on any income. You don't pay income on your known and official uh, pay salary that is given you, but any extra income that you have, you must pay taxes and you must declare it. Meanwhile, the Commissioner General used the opportunity to appeal for legislation to make their work more effective. President Mahama commissioned the authority to work towards boosting GDP through revenue mobilization. 
All right, now moving on the position of a communications director at the presidency, which Kokue Nidaho, former spokesperson to the late president at Tamils Occupied, has been scrapped by the Mahama administration. That position was missing in the list of the president's new appointments. The Information and Media Relations Minister Mahama Ayariga has meanwhile confirmed to the Daily Guide that, quote, there won't be a presidential spokesperson, unquote. Instead, he revealed that the Minister for Information and Media Relations would be the spokesperson of government, which includes the president. Ayariga was speaking in an interview, responding to queries as to who would speak for the president after his spokesperson, John Jinapo, was nominated as a deputy minister of energy and petroleum. He explained that the intention of the president is not to have a presidential spokesperson, and that is an arrangement that President John Dramani Mahama wants to establish. The same is said to be applicable to the office of Vice President Kwesi Emisa Arthur, where the former Deputy Information Minister James Ajinim Boateng had been tipped as a likely spokesperson. According to Ayariga, they're working towards a harmonization of the structure of communication on behalf of government. So the Vice President's office will be within that structure and will not operate outside of it. With the president said to have virtually completed his ministerial appointments, it's unclear where the likes of Kokwe Nidaho, James Ajinim Boateng, and other spokesperson of the presidency would be heading. Welcome back. We will be speaking with my colleague Erica Tissaud, who is at the court, to tell you what is happening there. But until that time, let's continue with more stories. The executive director of the National Service Scheme, NSS, Vincent Senam Kwagbenu, has reacted to public backlash at the scheme's intention to deploy service personnel to direct traffic in the cities, saying that it is a road safety personnel gap he needs to fill. He explains that there are other areas personnel will tackle, and it's not just about traffic directing. It will help the public get educated on what they should do, especially our road users. Driving on the banks of a road, it, have, it doesn't help the road itself. And also, it leads to accidents. A lot of road signs, and, and what have you, people and drivers who use our road, how many of them are able to read road signs that the, the, the exclamation mark says this? You should not do ABC. Zebra crossing, you have to stop for pedestrians to cross. When pedestrians are standing on the zebra crossing, that's when even drivers speed. These are some of the issues that when our personnel go through the road safety, uh, safety uh, what is it, commission, they'll be trained to help educate our road users as well as the drivers. Maybe they can go and help educate people at the, GP, at the GPRT or what have you. They're, they're, they are expressing need for our personnel, especially community policing, for instance. What information do you need to give to the police? If you see strange people occupying a facility, there are, you'll find about 20 people living in a very plush uh, community in Accra, where the police will never sue, but probably they are the armed robbers. So the consciousness of our residents to even divulge information to the police who help combat crime. You don't need a police in uniform to educate you on these things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our personnel can also do some of those things. And we are talking with the police and the other law enforcement agencies, the commissions, to see how best we can. But we don't want to do it just in a blue. We need to get the public also informed that mm -hmm. the national service personnel who are graduates, who are better informed, can help address some of these needs. Should, should now he also expressed concern about the seeming non-alignment of educational institutions, programs they run, and industry needs. We advertise to the user agencies and the general public that these are the caliber of personnel we have, these are their numbers, and if they have need for service personnel, they apply to us. Last year, we received a little over 100,000 applications. And in actual fact, we have so far deployed 74,024. 
the challenge we face is that in some areas, for instance, we do not get enough requests. For instance, if we have 100 journal, people with journalist background to deploy, and we have application for 24, we will have to de redeploy the 76 to another place. And that we want to, uh, our f want to feed, get this feedback to our training institution um, to enable them restructure their curriculum. Uh, you will notice that in some special areas, we don't even get the personnel to post. For instance, building technologies. People with B-Tech background, they are very few. So even highway, Ghana Highway Authority alone is not able to take all that we train. You see, so there is the need for us to re realignment of our training. Uh, and I don't want to hurt any uh, professor this morning, so I'll reserve that. I think that the National Development Planning Commission uh, will have to do a more serious work. Their planning should not only limit us to economic indicators and what have you. If they can help the National Council or Tertiary Education to actually give quotas to our universities to train specific uh, needs areas. It will help address the unemployment challenge we face. Because for some time, I think. Now, the Vice Chancellors Ghana have us invited leaders of the University Association of Ghana, UTAG, to a meeting over their threats to strike. The university teachers will have hinted that they will start an indefinite strike today to demand the payment of their salary arrears. The Education Ministry has asked the teachers to rescind their decision and accept an offer for the payment of their arrears in installments. But the university teachers have rejected the offer. UTAG President Dr. Anthony Simmons says the offer is not good. Dr. Langbong Bimi, who is the Legon UTAG President, is on the phone lines to tell us more. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So why is the offer not good? We had earlier on communicated our stance to the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission and for that matter government. So 20th February 2013, demanding that this salary areas be paid by 28th March 2013. As we speak now, they have not replied to that letter. All then right. They, they finally invited for a meeting and the heading of that letter says to negotiate payment plan for salary areas. We get to fair wages premises, we are ready for the meeting and realize we are not the only association or union, but there are 12 others. We don't have the same, I mean, uh, demands. So we felt that no, this was not the correct forum for us to discuss whatever we have been discussing with fair wages for the past eight months. So we told them yes, the property would have been to walk out of this meeting but we respect all the other unions as well. So we'll sit in for this meeting, but whatever decision you arrive at is not binding on you guys. So that's oh. our stance. They have not really told us whether they are ready to pay us at them by 28th March, or whatever difficulty there was, no offer has been made to us. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so if it came out that they, they communicated to the national president that they wanted a payment plan and they are given whether two times or three times. By the way you start function, we need to meet at a neck, take a decision, go back to our constituents, commun uh, communicate the same thing to the members at the various co uh, campuses, reach an agreement before we come back and co communicate it. It can't just be a decision by the national president. But I will go along with what you said. That is not good enough. There has not been any signal since we started discussion that fair wages wanted us to agree with them to pay these installments. No, we're not aware that they wanted the thing to be paid in batches. All right. Uh, Dr. Bimi, if you will permit us, we're going to play back an interview we had with the Ministry of Education's PRO, Paul Kramper, earlier in the day. He was yes. of the opinion that negotiations were moving in a positive light. Ministry got hit the hint that there was a statement in negotiations between the Fair Wages and Fire Commission and then the University Association of Ghana. <clears throat> now, 
the ministry facilitated a meeting between the two bodies to find amicable solutions to the impasse. <clears throat> and then it was realized at that meeting that Utah insisted that they wanted all their rents to be paid at once. Whereas the Service and Society Commission and the Minister of Finance were of the view that the arrest would be paid in three installments. So, in spite of the intervention by the ministry, the UTAC still insisted that they wanted the arrest to be paid at once. But the minister hasn't given, given up. The ministry has actually consulted the Vice Chancellor's Ghana to see how best this issue could be solved. And the good news is that the Vice Chancellor Ghana is actually going to call a meeting tomorrow with the National Executives of UTAC to find an amicable solution to this particular statement. All right. Now, Dr. Bimi, what is your reaction to what Mr. Krampa said? But I would have been very glad if I knew the date on which this interview was given. Because for the best of my knowledge, he might be referring to a meeting that took place somewhere last week, Tuesday. Oh, but this is an interview we had with him just this morning. Oh, then he's misinforming everybody in this country. Because the meeting that he has referred to was a meeting between Fair Wages uh, and Salad Commission and the Ministry of Finance on the one hand and USTAC on the other hand. It was the, there were 12 other associations and unions. And we told them, yes, we are not working out of, we, this is not the right place for USTAC to discuss whatever we, we told we are come to discuss. But we are not working out of this, but we will not participate in this meeting. When you finish whatever decision you have reached, it's not binding on you, Tad. Because we had written to you earlier, give you a deadline, and you just ignored it. It was irrelevant to them. They never replied to that letter. As we speak now, they haven't even replied to that letter. So it was just out of respect. We sat inside there with them. But the meeting didn't even come to a close. The lights went off, and the meeting was adjourned till Monday. And we told them we are not coming back on Monday. All right. So when are you meeting with the stakeholders in the sector? My NASA president has just informed me we will be meeting the stakeholders tomorrow at 10 a.m. Tomorrow but morning, 10 a.m. We already started the strike. The strike is on course. All right. Now, and after that, what would be your next line of action? Oh, let's wait and see what happens. If you go there and they are ready to pay us tomorrow, we reconvene, communicate to our members, and we review our stance. We can suspend the strike. We can call it off. If they are not ready to pay the, the money, we reconvene our members, we advise us. We are leaders. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Bimi, for speaking with us this afternoon. Thank you. And now I understand my colleague, Eric Curtis Howard, is on the phone. He's at the Supreme Court, as I mentioned earlier. Hello, Curtis. Hello, Curtis. All right. So we're going live to him, I understand. Curtis? All right, Curtis will be giving us uh, an update on what is happening at the Supreme Court concerning the election petition. At the Supreme Court, where the case involving the election petition is currently ongoing, um, as you may be aware, the NPP, led by its party's leader, um, Nana Kufado, the party chairman, Jacob H. Bilamte, and the running mate, Dr. Baumia, are challenging the 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 results of the 2012 presidential elections. So today in court, today is the day that the courts will set the rules as to when the case will be heard, as to how the proceedings in court will look like. Um, so right now, information I have gathered indicates that on the, the petition have narrowed down to two issues. The first issue is whether there were violations, omissions, and irregularities in the conduct of the presidential elections. And the second um, case that will also be heard is whether the violations affected the results of the elections. Um, the NPP, led by um, the its council and uh, Philip Addison, said that um, they want a situation where, when, whenever evidence, the evidence comes in, in the court, they should be in the form of affidavit, and when necessary, provision should be made for cross examination. So, which means that any witness that will be brought into court, you get me, they should sign an affidavit. But if it's possible for cross examination, they should also make provisions for cross examination to be made. He also um, said that they should, where they there's also going to be oral testimony. He wanted a PowerPoint presentation. There should be a PowerPoint presentation. But the counsel for the NDC are also saying that um, 
PowerPoint presentation will be a bit expensive to the state because it will require logistic equipment and bringing everything to the courtroom and everything. That would be quite cumbersome. So it will pose a lot of difficulties um, to the state. So that sh um, so as we are speaking now, um, pro um, proceedings in court is still ongoing. As to whether um, the case will be heard in or in camera, we are um, we are yet to get that information. Also, we are, we are, we'll also get that information will also be known by the time that the um, proceedings are over by the close of the day. So actually this is what um, has happened in the court so far today. And um, as I speak to you, as usual, the police presence are all over the court's premises. They are trying to make sure law and order and security at the court's premises is um, managed. And also uh, this morning to every leading member of the NDC and the NPP are also in court. Nane Kufado was here this morning. He came as usual with his running mate, Dr. Baumia, and um, the party chairman, Jacob Bichil Bilamti, is also in court. Also, there's um, other party leaders, um, including Professor Michael Quay Jr. and um, Pro Professor Michael Quay Sr. and Gabriel Otridako. Almost every person that has, is involved in this case, one way or the other, are in the, in the court's premises for proceedings to continue. So, this is the situation now, and um, we are still waiting for the proceedings to end so that we can get to you, our viewers, the, the situation on the ground. But for now, this is what is happening of course. Proceedings are still ongoing, so waiting for the final outcome of the case. Um, you are still live on the Joy News channel. We'll hand over now to the studio. My name has been Eric Etisawa. Keep watching Joy News on Multi TV. Thank you. Thank you to Curtis. Eric Curtis Howard there reporting to you from the Supreme Court. And if indeed that case will be given permission to broadcast live, Join News will do that for you on Multi TV. We'll be taking a quick break. When we come back, we'll be going on tour with the Greater Accra Regional Minister Paul Evans Adu to see what he has. The Greater, Region, the Greater Accra Regional Minister Paul Evans Adu is touring parts of Accra to familiarize himself with his new area of jurisdiction. My colleague Emmanuel Ante is with the minister and he joins us live. The regional minister and the mayor of Accra, uh, with the regional minister on his familiarization tour of the Greater Accra region. Um, hello, Honorable. Um, can you kindly tell us what you have found out so far and your impression about the whole thing? Well, generally, I think uh, one thing that touches me is that um, uh, to consider it that this day and age, where we still discharge, you know, liquid waste directly into the ocean, uh, I was a little bit touched. But at least there's hope. Um, when they also took us to the treatment plant under construction and then the other treatment plant that they started operating. I think that is uh, quite a big success that we need to trumpet about. Um, another thing that I think we should all consider, you see, when you took a view at the Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, being built right in the middle of the waterway, uh, seriously speaking, I think I will also um, appeal to our colleagues, the media, to help us tackle this matter. This is not a matter that needs to be handled by a uh, necessary government in power. It should have a bipartisan approach. Because when Accra gets flooded, it doesn't only affect a particular group of people. We should all come into agreement that that community there needs to be moved. And I mean, though I'm not an engineer, but you can tell that the thing is right in the middle, choking the waterway. And I think um, so far, these are some of the things that I have seen. And I think uh, with the support of His Excellency, we need to really insist that these things are done to the max. Uh, one, about the, the relocation of the discharge of the liquid waste uh, to the treatment plant, and two, getting to solve the inhabitants that block the, uh, the waterway into the ocean. Um, these are two major things that I've seen so far, and I think I must also take this opportunity to commend the mayor and his team for having the foresight, because when we went to the second plant where the thing has been broken down for about eight to ten years, nobody cares, you know, and these are the taxpayers' investment, and we cannot just leave it like that. Maintenance culture also needs to be encouraged, and I think uh, we are determined to really make sure that the right thing is done.
Honorable, how, how, what is your, your future? What is the future of the Greater Accra region? As you are a minister now, what plans do you have for the Greater Accra region? Well, generally, um, it's, it's, it's very like uh, my friend told me that a politician would love to. You ask them questions and then they start telling you from anything to anything. The truth of the matter is that we need to be very pragmatic and practical. We're going to select, I think, when you talk about Greater Accra, most people normally think they're talking about only urban Accra. A greater Accra does not uh, only consist of the urban Accra. We have rural Accra as well, where we have potential to undertake some irrigation projects at Accra Plains. And believe you me, the Accra Plains alone, if well, you know, cultivated, I believe can feed the people of Greater Accra and possibly part of the other, other side of the country. So one, we're going to harness the potential, agricultural potential that we have and to be able to see whether we make good use of the lands surrounding us we could go into some vegetable production and all that. The other thing that we're also looking will be aquaculture, you know, toward the lower estuary of the river Volta around Adan area, which will encourage a lot of people who want to go into fish farming. So as, as a means of trying to, you know, um, increase production levels. And then, of course, we can climb up with some agro-processing industries in that area. But on the whole, I'm just going to work in, 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 in close collaboration with the various district assemblies so that we can all pursue the agenda being set by His Excellency, the President. The President will want a future for this country where we'll be able to use private and public sector collaboration to create jobs and to move the system forward. And that's what I'm really going to dip in. I'm going to encourage all of them to make sure they get involved with PPP projects so that we can move on. Because the era when government alone used to create employment, I think it's long dead and gone, and we need to really dip in and move it forward. Now, finally, to the uh, mayor of Accra. Um, what do you say about the Mudo uh, treatment plant that is uh, now collapsed? We are working on it. It's our hope and uh, our determination to bring it back to life for the use by the metropolis. Now, how soon is that? We are working on it, moment by moment. Thank you very much, sir. Well, you heard it all from the Greater Accra Regional Minister and the Mayor of Accra. From uh, the uh, Salvation Army School, Yimano Ante reporting for Joy News. That was my colleague, Emmanuel Ante, taking a tour with the pragmatic new regional minister, Paul Evans Edu. We'll be taking a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking about World Autism Day. News is topical. It is the latest and most compelling of events. On Top Story, we bring you the top story, the day's leading news item in 15 minutes. It's sharp, focused, and it's live. Every weekday at 5.30 p.m. on Joy News on Multi TV, on radio and online.
Welcome back. We will be going into World Autism Day once we step into wellness. Now the whole of April is Autism Awareness Month. Today in particular, being April the... Wow, do you think I forgot the date? It's April the 2nd, that is World Autism Awareness Day. And we're talking about autism, what it is and what it means to be living with autism. So I have with me Baba Encho, and you are the coordinator? Okay. So um, if you could tell us exactly what autism is, I think we'll start our discussion from there. All right. Autism basically is um, a lifelong developmental disorder. Mm -hmm. It affects the person's social behavior. It affects the speech. It also affects the imagination of the person. Mm -hmm. Yes. It isn't, it isn't something that you can see when you look at the person physically unless the person starts acting out and then you'll be able to tell if you know them, if you have the know-how. Okay, now you say it's lifelong, which means um, you can't treat it? Um, it is manageable. Okay, so you manage it, uh, lifestyle adjustments exactly. or medication? Lifestyle adjustments, therapies, lifestyle adjustments. yes. Okay, I understand you're with care and training. So autism this would be care and training. autism awareness care and training. training center. Mm -hmm. So then this would be under your purview. How do you go about it? When someone brings you a child who has autism, how do you um, adjust the parents and the child so that they can better relate with each other, better relate with society around them. How do you do that? Yeah, we, we organize trainings once in a while for parents, and then we, we make our doors open to the parents any day, any time when they want to call us and ask various questions. When we have websites available, we give it to them, addresses to them, so that they can also read and understand. And any time there are workshops around, we try to invite parents to attempt to understand better how to live with their children. Okay, now this is Ghana, and a lot of people have a lot of prejudices about everything. Exactly. I'm just reading a few of the slogans you have on your t-shirts and banners. Autism isn't the tragedy, ignorance is. Um, some people stare at me like I'm an alien from out of space. Uh, autism speaks, light up the blue. Autism, oh, the possibilities. Are there possibilities for a person who has autism? Yes, there are possibilities. The person, the person can learn. Mm -hmm. So like at the center, the children come there like they're coming to school. And they can learn to those, who have, those of them who have the speech, they can learn to say things. Those who don't have, they are taught with pictures because they are visual learners. And so they can communicate with you through pictures. Okay, uh, how can you identify a child with autism? I'm sure there are a number of parents at home with children and they think it's one of those things or there's something terribly wrong with a child. How can you tell when a child has autism? Well, you, you have to know what autism is. First, it affects a person's speech. And so I guess when parents realize that their children are not speaking at a point in their developmental stages, then they, they they, they, they see that as a, a cause of concern. And, and then at they, what point is that? Is there a particular age where if your child isn't speaking, then you should start to think about course, this? We know that the child by, by, by one year should be speaking. So that if you're a parent and your child is not speaking around that time, then you should know that this, this is definitely something Not speaking wrong. as in any words at all? Yes. All right. Yes. Okay, uh, apart from speech, what other things should it parents be looking at? It affects their social for? behavior. And so they want to keep to themselves. Um, if they, 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 are, they want repetitive play, 
they want to, if, if it's a toy, a car toy that the child with autism is playing with, he might only be interested in the wheels and that's all. M meanwhile, if you give a child to a, um, a car to a, another child who doesn't have autism, he might want to go around with it and explore the, all the parts of the car. But a child with autism might only be interested in the wheels. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, children with autism are special because they have special needs. But how do you help them without ending, ending up pitying them? Yeah, if, if you're trained, you know you don't have to pity them. Because for some of them, they know we, they know so much. And you'd be amazed how much they know. Yes, and so you just make them know that this is how you do this. This is how you go about this. And they go with you. Sometimes even if you forget, don't, they don't forget. OK, um, I have observed one child with autism. And I noticed that. There are times his attention is fixed on one thing. Mm -hmm. When you call him, he, it's as though he doesn't hear you. Is the fixed attention, or should I say rapt attention, part of the autism, or is it just something it peculiar is. to him? It is. So what are their strengths? If they're able to pay that much attention to things, I'm sure they can retain a lot of information. Yeah, well, no two children with autism are the same. And so autism affects a child, or it affects an individual differently. So I can't say um, this is why he's doing that. But then every child with autism and what they do and how they want things. Some of them might want different things at the same time. Some might want to concentrate on just one thing and that's it. So you can't tell that because this is doing that and this is doing the same thing, they all have autism. All right. Mm -hmm. So what tips would you give a parent who has a child with autism in how to care for the child? You have to understand the child. You, sometimes you have to step back, observe the child, and know what the child wants, how the child wants to do things. We always want them to come into our world, but sometimes you need to step back and get into their world. If we understand them, it's better to live with them. All right. You mentioned it's lifelong, but does it change in any way as they grow? I think individuals change when they're growing. So, of course, things that I'll be doing when I'm a kid I want to do them when I'm like 20. Those are the changes. But the things that an individual with autism has, like the various signs, they're still there. OK. Um, I gave you the example of this young boy who has such rapt attention on certain things. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you think would develop into something else, as in um, a proficiency in a particular subject, say mathematics, for example? Exactly, yes, it can. It can be developed like that. So that's why we need, we need the professionals. Such a boy would need a professional to work with him, to really explore him and know what he likes. And then you work with him towards that. OK. So seeing as today is World Autism Awareness Day, what plans do you have for today? And then let's go through the rest of the month, seeing as it's all dedicated to autism awareness. Yeah, this morning, we, we usually have a route match on, on the 2nd of April and so from the center we went through to, to Joy FM and then went back to the center. And Where is the center? The center is in Kokomimli on the Royal Castle Road. And so whilst we are going out, we're also handing out leaflets that has a brief written about autism on it, giving it out to people in their shops, in their cars, in traffic, so people will read. So it was and dr dancing and drumming to create awareness that we are there. All right. Um, what is the cost involved in raising children with autism? Is there anything special that you need to do with them? You need care. You need people to help you care for the child. So it, it's expensive. It's expensive because mm -hmm. you can have things damaged. You need to replace them. You need like 24-7 care. So it's not something you can actually put a figure on? No. Okay. It's expensive, I can tell. Um, I understand that Asperger's is a mild form of autism. It is, it is um, a high-functioning autism. When you say high-functioning, what do you mean? What I mean is that somebody with, uh, with Asperger's can um, do things, remember things. Like, I, I have a nephew who has Asperger's, and he can ask of your date of birth, and if he, if he meets you after 10 years, he can remember your date of birth, he can calculate and tell you how old you are. I'm sure you forget if you have <laughs> friends like that. So those are just, just one of the unique things that people with Asperger's have. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So then Asperger's is more um, specialized to a particular field as compared to those who have autism? No, some of them are low functioning, others are high functioning. And so those who are, who are high functioning are called the, the people with Asperger's. And like I said, they are good with figures, like mathematics, with mm -hmm. um, arranging of things. And so I'm sure we have some kind of engineers and mathematicians who have Asperger's. All right. Yes. Uh, we went through today's activities, yes. but for the rest of the month, are there any special programs that the rest of us can join in, just so we get to know a little more about autism? Yeah, from tomorrow to Friday, we have free screening. So that's when, if you have a child with concerns, you can, as a parent, you can just walk in and then we'll screen for free. We have a day that we call the Inclusion Day that will take the children to a mainstream school. They'll stay in the mainstream school classroom that setting for the day and see so that the other children would also know that there are children who are that different. And then we have um, a field trip to go to the rear gardens that we are still raising funds for. And then we are going to have an open house. Pe a lot of people use our road. I'm sure they don't even know what we do inside there. Mm -hmm. So that day we open our doors for people to come inside and see exactly what we do with the children when they come. All right. Mm -hmm. Baba, thank you so much okay. for coming by today. Yeah. We have learned a lot, myself in particular, about autism. And we will be stopping by on the open day and hopefully another time that isn't so special just to see what we can do to help. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And now it's time for sports. It's brought to you by Tigo. Seeing as it's World Autism Awareness Day, you do have a reason to smile. It's time for sports. Now 26 home-based players have been selected into the local Black Stars team to begin camping on Tuesday in Obwase. Only one second-tier player, Hubert Ampa from 11 Wise, makes the list, which is dominated by players from the Premier League. The training program at the Lenclay Stadium in Obwase will end on April 11, 2013. Goalkeepers include Fatal Dauda, Shanti Gold, Foli Adade, Dwarfs and Daniel J. Liberty Professionals. The defenders are Godfred Saka Adriana, Christopher Bonnie and Vincent Atinga Dwarfs, Joshua Otu and Tijani Joshua from Wa All Stars, Daniel Akwe of Hearts of Lions, Wilson Akakpo Brekum Chelsea, and Nuru Sule of Hearts of Oak. The midfielders are Yaya Mohamed Amadeus, Mora Abubakar Hearts of Oak, Anthony Yamfo Dwarfs, Prince Boateng King Faisal, Samuel Cher Sr. and Jordan Opoku from Breakum Chelsea, Daniel Dakwa Adriana, Latif Mohamed Ashanti Gold, Hubert K. Ampa, Eleven Wise, and Joseph Gordon Mediama. Attackers are Yakubu Mohamed Ashanti Gold, Mahatma Otu Hearts of Oak, Latif Salifu, Breakum Chelsea, Besima Kesiedu, Mediama, and Suleimana Mohamed of. Let's keep things light and funky. We'll talk about what happened over the Easter weekend. There were a number of activities lined up for the Easter festivities, among which included a red and black party and a fashion bazaar. We caught up with some of these events and now we bring you the excerpts. The Club 745 at La Palm Royal Beach Hotel came alive when patrons thronged there for a fun-themed party dubbed Rouge et Noir, which simply means red and black when translated from the French to English. Dress code for the party seemed stylish with a touch of red, black or bold, as the name suggested, Rouge et Noir, red and black. Patrons who were mostly ladies were sported in their red and black outfits, with some expressing the theme in their shoes or other accessories. It should have been a night of fun, music, cocktails, socialization and more to celebrate the Easter season. But for reasons best known to them, these ladies remained seated for as long as our cameras were there filming. Perhaps the night was too young to get them active as it was just around midnight. The showbiz made a stop at the Fashionista GH Fashion Bazaar. Here, there was the display of made in Ghana fashion products ranging from shoes, bags, bangles, earrings and necklaces all made with the African fabric. 
we asked some fashion entrepreneurs about some of the challenges they go through in coming up with these creative designs. Getting the kind of quality I want as well. It's been a bit of a challenge, but I'm overcoming it. Yeah, but in the beginning, oh my God, I had to get them to redo bags over and over again until I got the quality I wanted. In Ghana, sometimes it's difficult to get um, quality stuff you know, especially in terms of finishing, like the locks. So the locks for me with the uh, accessories had been a very great challenge because I've, I've changed it a couple of times and finally I've, I've come up with um, a, one that, you know, has been very useful and good for the, the necklaces. And are the patrons satisfied with the products? I like bags in general, but I particularly like the Made in Ghana bags at the moment. I think they're very well made and I like the fact that they're using leather as well as our local fabrics as well, so I do appreciate them. At the end of the day, the bazaar was crowned with a cart walk on the runway and a musical performance. God bless the child that hold his own. Sometimes I feel like my hope is gone. Some lovely stuff there. If you missed it, don't worry, we'll tell you where to find it all later. Now moving internationally, North Korea will restart all nuclear facilities at its main Yongbyon complex in the latest move, which is likely to escalate tensions further with South Korea and the United States. And in Myanmar, 13 children have been killed after a fire apparently caused by an electrical fault engulfed an Islamic school dormitory in Myanmar's largest city. A record high, official figures have shown. The number of people unemployed in the 17 member states rose by 33,000 during the month to hit 19.07 million, the statistics agency Eurostat said. The highest rate was 26.4% in Greece, although the most recent figure for the country was from December. Separately, figures confirmed a deterioration. Our news for this hour. We will be back later on, but before we go, let me tell you what we talked about. It's World Autism Day today, and we spoke with Baba Encho, who is the coordinator of the Care and Training Center of the Autism School. She gave us an in-depth analysis on the condition and how we can help those who are living with it. President John Mahama filed his tax return, something you all should do, and Ghana Supreme Court is hearing the election petition before it. We will find out if we will be broadcasting that to you live later on today. That's it for Midday Brief. My name is Jennifer Jane Asante. Coming up at 2 p.m., we have a news briefing with more news.